What is going on guys, my name is John and welcome back to yet another video. Difficulty in Pokemon games range through every release. In every Pokemon game, there are some easy parts and then there are some challenging parts. I've seen a lot of videos recently of people focusing on the harder aspects of all the main series games, so I thought I should showcase the other side. Today, we're going to cover the top 10 easiest gems in Pokemon. At number 10, we're going to start off with the price battle from Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Price is the 7th gym leader of the Johto region and runs the Ice type gym. His gym contains 3 Pokemon, Seal, Dugong, and Piloswine. The first issue with this gym is that Seal and Dugong don't know any water moves. Although they both resist the moves, there's no coverage for the fire types at all. In addition, this gym doesn't have coverage for fighting or steel, which is three quarters of the ice's entire weakness list. Surf, Whirlpool, and Waterfall can be taught to Seal and Dugong, while Rock Smash and Earthquake can be taught to Piloswine. Being that he is the seventh gym leader, I just expected that he would probably have a more diverse moveset. If we look up north to Route 43, you have a 30% chance to see Flaffy and a 10% chance to see Mareep. You have to encounter the Red Gyarados right before you can fight Price, so every counter can be caught right before the battle. At number 9, we have Chili, Salon, and Crest from Pokemon Black and White. They are all the first gym leader, but you only fight one that puts you at a disadvantage for your starter. Because this is a harsh rule for just the first gym, if you go to the Dream Yard, you can get the counter for the Pokemon with the option of Pansage, Panseer, and Panpour at level 10. This is fairly close to the two Pokemon that they have, and they all have a stab move, making this gym a breeze. For number 8, we're going to go to their sequel and fight Clay in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. Clay is the fifth gym leader in Unova and has a specialty in ground type Pokemon. While he may have a fairly intense looking 3 Pokemon, there is one problem. All of them are completely weak to water without any sort of coverage. Many moves like Aerial Ace, Sludge Bomb, X Scissor, and Grass Knot can be taught to all of them to increase their coverage, but they made their move pool diverse in the wrong way. Also, over half of the Pokemon in the previous route are either grass or water types. Pokemon like Deerling, Fungus, Swadloon, and Meryl can easily overpower Clay's entire gym. At number 7, we have Roxanne from Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Being that this is another one of those first gym leader battles, I'll go easy on this one. But there are some interesting changes that were made to the remakes that didn't seem to make much sense. Starting off, Trico and Mudkip have a total type advantage over both Geodude and Nosepass. If enough grinding is done, they can both evolve to make this an easy clean sweep. Torchic learns Double Kick when it evolves at 16, which is also fairly easy to accomplish. What doesn't make sense about this battle is the fact that they made Roxanne much easier in the remakes than she already was. Each Pokemon has one less move than Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and they took away Nosepass's Orenberry. The strangest change out of them all was that Nosepass's ability was changed from Sturdy to Magnet Pull. Magnet Pull is an ability that doesn't allow Steel types to switch out once they're in battle. The issue with this is that there isn't a single Steel type that you can encounter up to the point where you fight Roxanne. Having Sturdy gave at least a little challenge, but this made the challenge much too easy. At number 6 we have Blaine from Pokemon Red, Green, and Blue. Now this gym is interesting. It is the seventh gym that you battle when you play through the game. Blaine specializes in fire types. Barely. The main issue with this gym isn't necessarily the Pokemon or even the gym itself. It's the fact that these games only have five fire moves in the entire game. Arguably the best fire move in the game, Flamethrower, isn't used at all in the entire match. The level 47 Arcanine knows Ember, which is the same move that Charmander learns at level 9. Every other Pokemon knows Ember or Fire Spin, while a Pokemon with Fire Bunch also goes unused. As for counters to their typing, you need Surf to go to the gym, implying that you probably have a Pokemon Air team prepared to sweep all of them. 
Lastly, there are just too many non-damaging moves on these teams. Aside from Arcanine, the other three Pokemon have half of their moves that deal no damage. This is more of a Generation 1 thing, but there still is potential to improve the movesets. For number 5, we have Bryson from Pokemon Black and White. He is the 7th gym leader in Unova, with his team focused around Ice types. The first issue with this team is that they're all Mono Ice types. This somewhat makes sense because in these games you don't see previous generation Pokemon until you beat the game, but it's strange that at least one of these Pokemon doesn't have a second typing. By the time that you reach this gym, you should have some Ice type coverage, which would make this match pretty easy. What I can't seem to wrap my mind around is the choice of moves that Game Freak made for these Pokemon. Just like Clay, they do a decent job covering the types, but some moves seem out of place. For example, Vanillish has Acid Armor, and Cryogonal has both Aurora Beam and Frost Breath. With this, both of these Pokemon have the ability to have stronger moves, too. Vanillish can learn Ice Beam at level 36, and Cryogonal learns it at level 33. Our number 4 spot is going to be taken by Volkner from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Volkner is the 8th gym leader of the Sinnoh region, and his gym is Electric Base. I've easily replayed Diamond and Pearl over 20 times, and I can't remember one single time that I've lost to him. To best define his team, weird. First off, half of his team aren't even electric types. The first one, Ambipom, has one attacking move. It's obvious that it's meant to be a setup baton pass Pokemon, but the problem is that it's not a fast Pokemon. Also considering that it has a special attack of 60, Shockwave isn't going to do a lot of damage to anything. Octillery's moveset is actually pretty solid, but I feel like it belongs in a completely different gym. Another strange thing is that all the Pokemon are monotypes. I get that there are only three electric types in the Sinnoh decks, but at least the random Pokemon could have had multi-typings. At number 3 we have Wolfric from Pokemon X and Y. I feel like there's just a big problem with Ice Gyms. Pokemon X and Y is notorious for handouts, but this gym receives the brute force of all those gifts that you receive in the game. Because it's the 8th gym, you should have some counter for those by now. If you didn't pick Fennekin as your starter, you had the option to have Mega Charizard on your team, and if you didn't pick that, you're also forced to take Mega Lucario, which sweeps the entire team. I will say that their movesets are pretty diverse, but it still struggles to cover all of its weaknesses. For being the last leader of the region, why does he only have 3 Pokemon? I feel like the minimum should be at least 4. This seemed to be a thing present through the entire generation, however. What I can't wrap my mind around is why Obama Snow only has 3 moves. Either they just forgot to add them, or they thought he was too good to have all of his moves. This is without a doubt the easiest final gym out of any of the games. For the number 2 spot, we have Brock from Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. Yes, the man who started it all. This gym is the definition of simple. By the time you reach the gym, you should be a little overleveled, but that doesn't really matter. Onyx is the only Pokemon with a stab move. Tackle, Defense Curl, and Bind take up the other positions. Bulbasaur and Squirtle have potential to evolve by then and could easily cover the match by themselves. Charmander, on the other hand, has a little trouble with their defenses. But on the way to reach the gym, you can catch a Mankey at 45% on Route 22. Because Low Cake is based on the opponent's weight, you can easily knock out both Pokemon in one hit. As easy as this sounds, nothing compares to our number one pick. And for the number one spot for the easiest Pokemon gym, we have Faulkner from Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Faulkner is the first gym in Johto and specializes in flying type Pokemon. This gym is awful. This is one of the only gyms where no matter how many trainers you dodge, you will still be a higher level than Faulkner's Pokemon. He has a Pidgey at level 7, and a Pidgeotto at level 9. We'll ignore the fact that the Pidgeotto shouldn't be evolved, and take note that his levels match the trainers in the gym. Taking into consideration the requirements that you need to even go to the gym, this shouldn't be a problem at all. Just like Brock, if you somehow have trouble with using Chikorita, you can catch a Geodude in the Dark Cave at 
They fixed his team in Heart Gold and Soul Silver remakes, but this gym is without a doubt the easiest one out there. Alright, and that's going to do it for today's video. I'd love to hear what gems you thought were the easiest, and feel free to comment below on your thoughts of my rankings. If you liked the video, leave a like as I'll be putting out more videos soon. If you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.